Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Chris Giles, the Technical Director of Havala Resources. Today, I plan to give you a brief outline of our progress during 2021, and also what we propose to be doing in 2022. I'd also like to highlight a few other points of interest for our shareholders. I draw your attention to the fact that there are some forward-looking statements in this presentation, and this cautionary statement covers how they should be treated. Hevelar's flagship project is the large Kalkaroo Copper Gold Deposit. And over the last two years, we've been very much focused on the western end of the deposit, in particular, uh, the gold starter open pit. In March of this year, after more than 12 months of compilation work, we submitted the PEPA document to the Department for Energy and Mining. The PEPA stands for Program for Environment Protection and Rehabilitation. And it's the document upon which the Mines Department uh, grants approval for the mining go ahead. So after some months, we received the feedback and from August, to the present time, we've been working systematically through all the, the points raised by the department. And this has included uh, additional consultants reports and reviews. Now, many mining consultants these days are, are very busy. And unfortunately, this has resulted in some delays in getting uh, reports completed. And although we hoped to have it submitted by the end of this year, it's going to go into early next year now. And that will trigger the final approval process for approval of the West Kalkaroo Open Pit. During the first half of the year, we also carried out a quite extensive uh, infill drilling and resource expansion drilling using our own RC drill rig. And the results were excellent in general and confirmatory or better than what were in the actual resource itself. So that was very encouraging. At the same time, we continued with metallurgical work, mining design, mine scheduling, process plant design, uh, all as part of the ongoing PFS study, which is now nearing completion. We also engaged with financiers, potential investors, mining contractors, equipment suppliers, construction contractors, and most recently, the native title claimants. And we expect to be able to close all of the above tasks once the PEPA is approved by the Mines Department, and also when the West Calc Group PFS is completed. So all in all, uh, we've expended a considerable amount of effort to generate quite solid progress on a number of fronts with respect to the West Kalkaroo mining commencement uh, this year. Regarding our other projects, in 2021, we did quite a bit of work in the Mutaru area. Drilling at the actual Mutaru deposit demonstrated some load extensions at depth. And we're presently compiling the assay results, which will be released in due course. We also embarked on quite extensive regional reconnaissance, which identified many outstanding prospects for drilling follow-up. And one of these was the Coburn prospect, where Havilah's geologists identified an undrilled, untested uh, Gossen, which is the surface expression of sulphide. So we drilled three RC holes into that, and confirm good widths of sulphide mineralization beneath the goss. Also during the year, the uranium price awoke from its decades slumber and uh, many ASX listed uranium stocks uh, moved upwards and started to uh, relook at their projects. And against this backdrop, the Havilar directors decided to proceed with the new energy IPO, initial public offer. It's proposed that new energy will hold the uranium rights over more than 11,000 square kilometres 
in the world-class Frome Basin sand-hosted uranium province. Now these tenements belong to Havilah, which has via a tenement access agreement conferred the exploration rights for sand-hosted uranium to new energy. It's planned that there'd be a priority offer to Havilah shareholders, which means that uh, shareholders can, if they wish, take up shares in the new company. And there'll also be an in-specie distribution of the new energy shares that are held by Havilah uh, back to the Havilah shareholders. The other area where we did uh, quite a bit of work uh, revolved around the Jupiter MT anomaly in the northern, northern part of Havilah's tenements. MT stands for magnetotellurics. It's a sophisticated geophysical method that can detect deep conductors in the Earth's crust, which in turn can indicate uh, potential mineralizing systems. We worked with the University of Adelaide team to narrow down the Jupiter MT target area, which we further refined by aeromagnetic susceptibility studies, which identified several uh, auspicious cross-cutting structures. And while we're doing this work, uh, we realized that this area has potential for mafic, ultra mafic hosted uh, platinum group metals and nickel. And I'll describe a little more about that later on. But in general, for our other projects, there was substantial progress on achieving our medium term objectives. And this work will be continued into 2022. As for 2022, the Havilah directors are cautiously optimistic about the prospects for the company. And there are a number of reasons for this, not least of which is the excellent commodity prices and in particular for the commodities that Havilah has resources for, namely copper, critical metal, minerals, gold, and uranium. And also, it can't be underestimated the South Australian location uh, of our projects, in particular, the very underexplored Kernamona Crater. And we have work programs planned for 2022, uh, which should generate a lot of uh, data and interest uh, in, in many of uh, our projects. And we have key shareholder support for the strategic direction and these proposed programs. And potentially during 2022, the West Kalkaroo gold mine will get into production, subject to completion of the PFS, the Mines Department permitting, financing, and a board decision. And that will be an exciting development for Havilah going forward. On any stretch, however you look at Havilah, it's highly leveraged to copper, cobalt, and gold which is matched by few other junior resource stocks listed on the ASX. And we have the belief that as our projects progress and are better recognised by the market, that a re-rating of Havilah share price is likely. And suffice to say that all options are being pursued to realise value on several fronts in Havilah's uh, mineral portfolio. For example, I've mentioned the new energy IPO to add value to Havilah's uranium assets. And similarly, um, potential IPOs, sale of equity interests, or joint ventures are being considered for our other copper, iron ore, and tin projects. And the sole objective in all of this work is to maximise the shareholder value in Havilah's mineral portfolio. So now just turning to a few other points I'd like to make in the remainder of this technical presentation. And the first one is Havilah's credentials as a copper investment. And I guess you could ask um, you know, why copper? And the reason is that the outlook is particularly favourable, we think. There are just so many new uses for copper in the renewable energy world, and not to mention when many more electric vehicles get on the road. 
So against the backdrop of this higher demand, the supply of copper is somewhat constrained these days because many of the larger copper deposits, which have been the mainstay of copper supply, are actually waning in terms of grade um, and copper output. So the copper is not being replaced at a sufficient rate to maintain the supply. And there are five reasons why Havilah is very well positioned to benefit from this situation in copper. Firstly, there's their favourable location near Broken Hill, with good infrastructure, a very pro-mining, low sovereign risk uh, South Australian environment, which also has the highest ESG uh, regulatory environment, the tier one destination for that. An ESG, which stands for environment, social and governance, is going to assume increasing importance for mining companies going forward, simply because the end users of all the mineral products are taking far more interest in how the minerals are produced, what the environmental consequences are, how the, the local social situation is managed, and of course, the governments of the companies. And Hevela has uh, two substantial copper projects with a large combined copper, gold and cobalt resource inventory, as shown below. And as I mentioned before, the Calco mining development is planned to commence in 2022. And this is based on a, a large open pit ore reserve of 100 million tonnes. There's appreciable ups upside in the resource expansion, new discoveries and additional revenue for cobalt rare earths and molybdenum. And on any valuation metric, Havilah has a high leverage to copper as compared to all its ASX listed peers. The second point is the uh, huge exploration upside or potential of the Mutaru project area. Basically, there are many high quality uh, base metal prospects within an hour's drive of Broken Hill in the Mutaru project area. During the year, we employed an experienced exploration geologist, and he has spent the last 12 months meticulously compiling extensive prospect information, some cases dating back 50 years, locating all the old drill holes, all the geochemical sampling, with the objective of ranking the various prospects, and there are many of them. And he's identified several high conviction prospects with previous uh, potential economic drilling intercepts. For example, at Mingeri Mine, as shown on this map, uh, Fallout, Wilkins, Green and Gold, to name a few. The first of our regional prospects was tested in 2021, and this was the previously undrilled Gosson at the Coburn prospect. And this yielded instant success with a wide zone of quartz, sulphide, gold, copper, and cobalt mineralization intersected. And this prospect is within sight of the main road, rail, and the border town of, of Coburn. Now, it's important to note that in this fairly compact area, so close to Broken Hill, the size and the grade of the discoveries does not have to be exceptional or stand alone, because it's highly likely the sulphide ore will end up as an additional feed for a planned Mutaru sulphide ore processing plant. So this is very much a spoke and hub development concept, but with the advantage of being within daily commute from Broken Hill. So Mutaru is a really exciting area. You're going to hear a lot more about it. We're going to be doing quite a bit of drilling out there next year. And um, we have great optimism that we can greatly boost the uh, copper, cobalt, and gold resources in this area, in the vicinity of the Mutaru deposit. Another point, a bit more geologically convoluted, perhaps, to the layman, but the work that we've been doing around the Jupiter uh, Magneto Tuller or MT uh, conductive zone with the University of Adelaide has um, prompted us to compile a lot of information and to develop some theories on the 
the the origins of some of the rocks in the area. And one particular feature that's of great interest is this linear 30 odd kilometer long linear magnetic anomaly, magnetic high, which is almost certainly some type of dike. We've called it the Benadry dike here after the Benadry Ridge. Underneath all of this area is a very large conductive zone deep in the crust. Over here we have a large magnetic anomaly, which is presumably indicating a possibly deep seated mafic, ultra mafic intrusion. And this immediately draws to mind the analogy with the Julemar complex uh, in Western Australia, where Chalice Mining in early 2020 made a fabulous uh, discovery of a major platinum group element, nickel and copper, gold, cobalt uh, deposit in a layered uh, mafic, ultra mafic intrusive complex. And the dimensions of this uh, body are not dissimilar to the Benadry dike. And because of the geological, general geological setting of this area, we think that uh, this dike has potential for possibly similar um, platinum group element nickel mineralization as in the Julemar complex. And not to mention the, the proximity of the conductive zones. Uh, and also it lies at the rifted or faulted margin of Benadry Ridge, which is considered to be a very positive indicator. So again, we'll be doing more work on that during 2022 and um, possibly drilling some holes to, to test for mineralization in this dike. And finally, I just want to mention um, the proposed IPO of new energy resources. And new energy is going to hold uh, extensive rights to uranium, sand host uranium within this large 11,000 square kilometer tenement block, which belongs to Havilah. And this tenement block lies between the large honeymoon resource and also nearby Jason's and also the Beverly, Beverly North and Four Mile uranium deposits, which have been operating successfully for the last 20 years. Basically, it occupies the same uh, sand hosted uh, geology in the Frome Basin. There are potential sources of uranium as at Beverly, we have these high uranium granites here shown by the high radiometric anomalies, the red color, which is likely the source for all the uranium in the sands. Similarly at Honeymoon, the source uranium is likely to be quite uranium rich granites to the south. And we have something similar here in the uh, subsurface Benadry Ridge, which is a subsurface topographic high, which we know is high in uranium and has uh, shed uranium uh, in all directions. And the Oban deposit uh, is an example, but we have numerous other uranium hits in this area. So we expect that there's very good potential here to find Honeymoon or Beverly style rain deposits within uh, this tenement block. The other factor to consider is that these sand hosted uh, uranium deposits are amenable to in situ recovery. Now, this is a well proven uranium mining technology that's used uh, very successfully in Kazakhstan and the US, where the significant uh, production. It's also been uh, applied in the last 20 years um, by Heathgate Resources, the Beverly and the nearby uranium mines, who have been running a successful uh, ISR operation on the Western Throne Basin. Now, the beauty with uh, in situ recovery is that it is scalable. And there's been some great technological advances in the last couple of decades, um, which can greatly improve the efficiency and reduce the cost of, of the processing. And, and one of these key points has been the development of exchange uh, resins, iron exchange resins. The beauty with iron exchange resins is that as the uranium circulates through the sand, I mean, the uh, wheat acid solution circulates through the sands, picks up the uranium. It comes through the, the iron exchange resins. The iron exchange resins um, recover the uranium, hold the uranium. And when they become loaded 
uh, they can be replaced, that resin can be replaced by already cleaned resin, and the loaded resin can be taken to a central uh, processing facility to recover the uranium from the resins, clean it up, and then it can go back in the, the uh, swap and go columns all over again. So that's one great bit of technology which has sort of come of age in the last decade or so, and it's actually being used routinely uh, in the Beverly operations. The other things, of course, um, the area is very sunny. It's very amenable to renewable energy generated via solar cells and stored in batteries. And the power draw for these type of operations is not necessarily huge, and it could be well supplied um, by renewable energy without any external energy source. And satellite communications, of course, with sophisticated control systems means that the the whole operation can be run remotely. So it's possible to have several of these completely autonomous, remotely operated, uh, powered uh, by themselves type of circulation systems going uh, at quite a few different locations within the area. And the deposits don't necessarily have to be uh, super high grade or very large for these operations to be successful because of the uh, cost efficient and the highly effective ISR technology. So they're the points that I wanted to share with you. And this table really is the basis for all of our work, the joint ore reserve and mineral resource tables, which are published in our annual report every year. So that's the conclusion of the technical presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be very pleased to answer them for you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.